Behind the bag! It gets through Buckner! Here comes Knight and the Knicks win it! All right, it's our favorite time of year, the annual NBA Over Under podcast with Will Dietz and Steve Hallinan. We've been doing this podcast for years. It's a blast. It's it's a thing I love to hate because I it, we always go for like 10 hours and then I'm editing forever and I'm up in the middle of the night. We're actually starting today at around 6 o'clock, so I might get some sleep tonight. I'm excited about that. Before we get to our wonderful esteemed guests here, I just want to read off a couple of predictions that were said on this podcast last year. Last year was obviously a really tough year. Let me just read a couple direct quotes from last year's podcast. First one from me, Celtics are the Spurs of the East. Great locker room. Stable. (laughs) Jabari Parker is going to have a monster year. Not so much. This one from uh, Steve. I think Fultz is going to be good. Oh, God. It's <laughs> embarrassing. We got another one. Um, we were all kind of wrong on this one. Jokic is really good, but not sure he translates to team wins. <laughs> <laughs> the Joker. Finally. Joke, I, joke's on us. The joke was definitely on us. And finally, I like this Suns team better than the Kings. It was a rough year last year, but it's always fun going back and reading some of our worst predictions. So without further ado, let's brief Steve and Will in. Will, two years ago we were on fire. What happened last year? I don't know. It seemed like the bad teams got a little better. The good teams got a little worse. I had a good feel on the top of the league, but anything past the first ten teams, I I had no idea what was going on. Let's try and do a little better this year. It's the redemption year. Let's get it going. Let's start off here with the Milwaukee Bucks. Their over-under number is 57 and a half wins this season. Steve, I'll start with you. What do you like? Well, yeah, last year, first year for me, I didn't come with a good juju, man. It was not, not, not strong, not, uh, not something I'm proud of. That being said, with this one, I'm just, I'm just going gut reaction. I did my research last year. It didn't obviously pan out in, in correct predictions. So, I think with the Bucks, I'll say over. You know, that means that they've got to be 58, 24. Yeah, I'll take over. Uh, I'm going to jump in and quickly and respectfully disagree with you on that one. Fair. Uh, Milwaukee was one of my best bets for overs last year. It was a, 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 one of the few things I did right. This year, I just think they're going to fall back a little bit. I think the loss of Brogdon is going to hurt them. Their roster is starting to get up there in age. It's just a, the roster is a little older. They've got some good young parts, but mainly a lot of people, a lot of older players are going to get some playing time. I never really love Eric Bledsoe, and he still has to play a prominent role in this team. Of course, Giannis is going to be great. Uh, I, I just have him a little less, 56, 57 wins. I think they're going to step back up, maybe up to five wins this year. Yeah, last year, I, I love when I get to be the tiebreaker, by the way. <laughs> last, favorite spot. last year, they won 60 games, and it kind of seemed like everything went right for the Bucks, and they, they caught some everybody by surprise a little bit. I don't think anyone really saw that they'd be that good. They're bringing back most of the cast, minus Brogdon, like Will mentioned, and I think Giannis is going to be, again, incredible. He, I think I'm going to take him as my uh, MVP. We'll get to that later on in the podcast. But he, he's just the best player in the league. He's incredible. 57 and a half. I do think they might take a, a little step back from last year. Although they do have both Lopez twins. You know I have a soft spot for them. I think Vegas wants us to take the over. So I'm, I'm actually going to side with Will here and go under. Well, I still have him as the number one seed in the East. They're, they, Philadelphia and Milwaukee are either 1-2-2-1. One, two, two, one, but... I haven't taken a little step back, too. A gutted, a gutted Celts team to a certain degree, a gutted Raptors team to a certain degree. The Nets aren't operating on full power. It's got to be wins had, you know? So that, that's that's my thought. Team I really like this year, it, it pains me to say, I think they might be the one seed in the East. The Philadelphia 76ers, Steve, your team, 54-and-a-half is the number. How are you feeling about Skinny and Bede? Uh, I'm feeling great. Man, super fit. 20 points in the first half, albeit in a preseason game yesterday. I will have to just kind of stick with the home team. Let's let's be real. I'm going over. If I went under and they went over, I'd be so mad at myself. So I'll uh, I'll err on them going 56 and 26. 
Um, I could see that happening. So let's go over. They're going to want the number one seed to bring uh, to bring uh, the home court advantage to Philly. Will, who you like? Uh, I agree with Steve on this one. Um, I, I think they're going to be gunning for a little bit better regular season. I think Embiid's going to. He's shown that he's starting to stay a little healthier. He and Simmons are still two of the best athletes in the league. They brought in Al Horford to bring some veteran leadership and a solid defensive presence. Uh, I really see them contending for that number one seed and with a similar number of wins to the Bucks. But in this case, I think that they'll be over. I'm with you guys. I like the over. I, I heard a good quote from Ben Simmons. Uh, I think it was just today. He He actually was talking to a reporter and he admitted he's actually talking about a shooting, which he... It has obviously been something he's a little sensitive to the last couple of years, you know, just not wanting to talk about it at all. He, he mentioned, he's like, it's something I'm working on. Obviously, I'm not a, I'm not a great shooter. It's, um, I'm great at a lot of other things, but shooting is something I can work on. I think that is just a big step for him, honestly. And I think Ben Simmons is going to have a big season. The one thing I, I, I just want to ask you, Steve, about Philly is go-to guy – on offense down the stretch was Jimmy Butler last year. I know Embiid's going to be that guy, but you need someone in the backcourt. Are you worried who's going to be that guy to hit the big shots at the end? That's a constant worry of mine. Um, that's why when, when we got Jimmy, I felt a little more at ease come playoff time because I knew that he could be the guy to step up. And you know, I want to say we had him for within the first few weeks. He had two game winners, one against your net. Sorry to rehash that one. Um, Maybe Tobias fills that role. He is a he's a mismatch nightmare to a certain degree, especially when you've got Horford and and Joel on the on the on the court. But uh, that's something that's going to just have to develop as as the year goes on. I think someone's going to have to build that confidence and and be ready and able to kind of step into that to that spot. I don't, I don't think we have it right now. Well, we all like Philly. Let's move on to my Brooklyn Nets. The number this year is 44 and a half. I got it wrong last year. I thought they were going to kind of tank. First time they've had their first round pick ever, it seems like. And, you know, the Nets definitely overachieved. They, they were a really, really fun team to watch. Great chemistry, made the playoffs. Now they are 44 and a half games here. Kyrie. I'm a, I'm a little on the fence on this over-under, so I, I do want to hear your guys' takes. Will, let's start with you. I looked at this as a slight under. I think that uh, D'Angelo Russell really had a breakout year last year. He was their closer. He was their go-to scorer. Of course, you replace that with Kyrie Irving, who's you, you could argue is better, but he's not. it's not a huge step up. I think it's going to take a little time to get uh, him – uh, up to speed chemistry wise, uh, I like the addition of uh, Tori and Prince from uh, the Hawks. They had a little depth, but I don't know. I, DeAndre Jordan is completely washed at this point in his career. I hope that I can see Karis Levert having a, a, a breakthrough season, but or I mean, a, to continue on with his breakthrough play. I, I just don't think I don't think they're going to get their chemistry figured out. Uh, they'll be good enough for a six or a the sixth seed in the East, but I think they're going to be a little under, 42, 43 wins this year. Steve? I agree with Will. Uh, I think they'll kind of hover around 500. They're not obviously operating at, at full firepower with no KD, and you know, I, I kind of agree with, with the D'Angelo Russell assessment. He was their heart and soul, um, and obviously shipped out. You're bringing in a guy that can also bear the load but it's Kyrie man Kyrie seems to stir things up everywhere he goes so I think they'll be I, I'm, I'm, I'm with Will I think they'll be on a slight under alright you guys got me fired up I'm going over yeah of course you are you guys got me fired up there I think Kyrie's going to be good I, I'm not too worried about it I think Harris is going to be really good I just really hope he stays healthy I think he can be an all star this year and then you've got Dinwiddie off the bench. That's three really, really good guards. This team reminds me a little bit of like a Portland East. They have really good guard play. You know, you got the fro down low, a little bit like Nurkic. I, I see a little similarities there. I think the Nets will play well. I think they'll be a competitive team. I, I do see them finishing maybe a five seed in the East, six seed, like Will mentioned, right around mid forties. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take the over. I'm I'm just excited. I'm very excited. Let's go to the other New York team because that's just always fun. The New York Knicks. Twenty seven and a half is the number. Will 
Sorry about this past summer. <laughs> I know I was extremely excited, and then I saw KD blow out his Achilles, and if I felt like I lost a player, but it turned out he probably was never going to the Knicks anyway. So turned out not to be that bad. Um, this team, they, they frustrate me to no end. So um, <laughs> I'm gonna, they're over under is 27 and a half this year. They're coming off a 17 win campaign. Uh, they decided to bring in every veteran I, I, I know, and, and as well as Julius Randle. Strong moves for the next. I, I have to say, I think they're going. I, I, I Mitchell Robinson, I think, is going to be a great defensive presence for them. They have a couple gunners, uh, a somewhat versatile lineup right now. I, I just think that they're going to surprise me, and and they'll finish over their 27 and a half win total. They'll win enough games. They'll they'll do what they do every year, which is go about 15 and 15 to start, and that'll be enough to carry them to the over. That's the interesting thing. Like, I don't think they have a lot of very good players, but I also don't think they're they're tanking this year. I don't get that vibe. They seems like they want to actually try. Yeah, it's the vibe I get too. I think Randall really does want to have a breakout huge year, and Robinson is a uh, capable and competent defender so and then they have enough gunners that uh they'll they'll be in enough they'll win enough games in, in a crappy conference steve dash is laughing over here <laughs> i'm going under man i think this is probably the one that we were all correct on last year no not all of us no no i said over well because <sighs> will was just knew they were they were obviously in tank mode so of course they'd win like a gajillion amount it's of games true. It was more of a – it was reverse psychology. I was hoping yes. for them to – I was hoping to be wrong that year. This year I actually do – last year I knew I was going to be wrong when I said it. This year I actually do believe they're going over. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm going to say under. Uh, my real question, though, goes back to the Nets. Tom, how long did you work out that throw down low line? Let's be real. It's pretty good, right? <laughs> He's going to have yeah. so many more victims with the blocks this year. I can't wait. Yeah. He just better stay out of Joel's way. But, yeah, I'm going to say under for the Knicks. Um, you know, definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. I think they're going to try to tank again in hopes of getting a uh, number one pick, and, and they're going to get the fourth pick again. So there's my call. Yeah, this number seems pretty about right. Just thinking about last year, the Atlanta Hawks were kind of a, a fun, bad team that was trying. They won 29 I, similar vibes here with the Knicks. I don't know if they have quite a Trey Young on their team. So I'm going to go slight under just because I'm not very confident in this team. But I think they're going to be right around that number. Next up, let's talk about the Boston Celtics. Kemba Walker, no more Kyrie. Their number is 48 and a half wins. Steve, what do you think we got the Celts? Celts, I think that that may be a little steep. Um, I see them as a mid 40 win team i don't know if i'm gonna go that 49 50 though so i'm gonna say under i mean brad stevens is a great coach he always it's probably bad karma for me to go against him here but that shits my gut so i'll say under well i like i like the disagreement we have going on i'm gonna go over this year i mean we were really wrong with the uh or at least whoever came along with me on the over last year was really wrong spurs of the east uh, uh, yeah, the Spurs of the East, Tom. But uh, and forty-eight and a half was a little higher than I'd like. I'd love it to be about a win and a half or two wins lower than that. But I'm going to go over. I'm going to say Brad Stevens has his uh, a little bit of magic back, in just in terms of getting rotations correct and things like that. I, I think Kemba and Kyrie are kind of a wash in terms of the player. I mean, close. Kyrie's got a little more skill. Uh, Kemba's. Uh, they're both closers. They're both guys that can finish games. Uh, hopefully, Tatum uh, takes a step forward after playing overseas this year uh, for the uh, for the U.S. squad. And one thing I want to point out is Boston does still have still has assets. They still have draft picks. Other people's draft picks. Memphis's pick, and they would they could potentially swing a deal for someone. And you know, someone always becomes available. And they could actually add to their roster this year if they really want to take a swing in the East. So I have them going over. It's a good point. They could make a move and mess things up. I have them as a slight under. They, they've they got a lot of talent, and I think the chemistry should be pretty good. Kemba and those guys playing this summer, it looks like they're all getting along and having a good time. So that's definitely a good sign. And, the, you know, the Celtics, as bad as and craziest things got last year, 
They did win 49 games, so they're going to be good. I think they're going to be kind of in the middle of the pack in the East as well. I'm going to go slight under just because I still think they're they're pretty young, and I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I always liked Horford and just what he what he brought defensively to them. I'm, I'm, I want to see how they make it work. And Tatum, you mentioned it. Can he really take the next step? Because he he needs to start balling a little bit if the if the Celtics want to get over 50 games. So. That'll be fun to watch. We'll see. The next one I want to talk about is the Indiana Pacers. They were kind of a bit of a surprise team last year. Oladipo going down was was a killer, but they were, you know, probably the third best team in the East before that happened. Indiana's number this year is 46 and a half. Will, what do you think about the Pacers? Uh, this was the last team I uh, looked at, and it's the first team I wanted to change. I had them as an under this year, but... I'm. This is one that I'm going to waffle on and kind of still make up my mind and maybe let you guys talk to me about them a little bit. Uh, they were they they lost Bogdanovich, who had such a great year last year. He he was their closer when Solo Depot went down, and I don't know. We I don't know how. I really don't know how Oladipo is going to play coming off the injury. He he should be in the prime of his career, but he did he did sustain a serious injury and he's coming back from that. I'm not. I like Brogdon, and I think he'll fit in well. And Jeremy Lamb is also a good addition. So they should be, they should have shooting. They should have a lot of shooting. So I guess in a league where the three pointer is important, I think they might have enough shooting to really get the job done here. I don't know. I, I had him as an under, but I, I, I'd be curious to hear what you guys have to say. Steve, what do you think? Sorry, I had it muted because Dash was losing his mind. Um, <laughs> With Dash losing his mind, he's getting fired up. I'll ride the Pacers bandwagon and say over. They were a shocking team last year, and even like when El Ladiba went down, they just kept winning. And it's I'm, like from a Sixers perspective, I'm watching. I'm like, oh, El Ladiba's out. This will be an easy spot for us to jump to the three seed, and we literally had to play to the basically the bitter end. So uh, I think they've got some spunk. I think they've got some heart. I'll give it, I'll give them the over. I'm gonna go slight under on the Pacers. Just because I think they might have over overachieved a little bit last year. Not exactly sure when Oladipo's coming back, so they could get off to a bit of a slow start. I'm going to go slight under with them. I'm going to stick with Tom and stick with what I said initially and go slight under as well. All right, let's go to Will's favorite basketball team, Detroit Basketball. One prediction I did get right last year was Blake Griffin would have a very good season for the Pistons, and... They did end up squeaking into the playoffs there in the eighth seed. The number this year, 37 and a half. Will, what do you think about the Pistons, your team? Um, yeah, my team. I, I was wrong about them last year, but I have them as an under. I think I'm going to be right about them this year. I think Dash, is, uh, Dash agrees with me. Dash um, is very worried. Dude. He's pissed. Blake, Blake is just a... Uh, Blake's always an injury risk. Uh, uh, can he give me half a season? I don't know. Um, Andre Drummond is just a, not really a modern player. He'll, he'll step out and shoot a three in the uh, preseason, but that, you can't count on that. I, I don't love their guards. They brought in Derrick Rose, but I, I mean he's over the hill. And I, I don't really like anything about this team. I, I think they're listless and they have no real direction and. I have them going under. Steve? Yeah, I'm with Will there. They just don't do it. Don't, they don't do it for me. Let's be real. Andre Drummond, he couldn't even suit up for a preseason game to face Joel Embiid last night. He's scared. Let's go under. <laughs> They're done. Yeah, I'm going under here, too. I think this number was interesting. You know, they won 41 games last year. Got a little bit of continuity. They're bringing back most of the same team. Now the number's 37 and a half. I feel like Vegas might know something. I feel like Blake... Might be banged up this season. This could be a definitely the injured Blake season. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go under with you guys. I agree. It could be this year's Memphis Grizzlies where they break this team apart finally. Yeah. Hopefully. It seems. <laughs> yeah. Can't stand them. It would be nice just to get a little change there for sure. Next up, the team that was as a Nets fan, I was scared of at the end of last year. They were just finishing the year on a tear. The Orlando Magic. The Magic, man. 42 wins last year. Their number's 40 and a half this year. They've just been a, just such a joke in the league the last couple of years. They finally seem to got it together last year. 
What do you think of this Magic team, Steve? Dude, Markel Fultz is going to be good, man. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, they did. They, they they had you sweating late. Um, they wouldn't lose. Those last two weeks, three weeks for you, you were on the edge of your seat every single night between the Heat, between the Florida teams, the Heat, Magic, the Bobcats were giving you, or the Hornets, I should say, sorry, were giving you fits. What was that number again? Oh, let me look at it. 40 again. and a Just half. Like, 40 and a half for the Magic. Man, I could see them literally hitting right at 500, 41 and 41. I'll go over. I'll take I'll take the risk. Never would have thought I would have said over on the Magic, but I'm doing it. Well, I'm going to go back to a slight under. I think they'll probably compete, get an eight seed, at, but at 40 and 42, I think, I think Vucevic kind of hit his ceiling there. I've never really been impressed with Aaron Gordon, I, I don't see him making some sort of huge leap. They added a little more depth on the wing with uh, Alfred Rukaminu, and uh, I don't know. I just don't think it's a great roster. I, I think they overachieved, and I, I think they're going to continue to try, but I, I don't see them being more than 500 and I'm being a little under. It's a tough one. I, I, don't, I don't have a strong opinion, but I don't, I don't see them making a, a jump into the five or the six or the seven range here in the East. So I still was a slight under. Yeah, this is a team that's just. I think it's a really. It could go either way. You know, it's it, at the end of the day, it's the freaking magic. Are they really gonna play all that well? Was was last year a bit of a fluke? Maybe they were beating up on teams that kind of gave up at the end of the year. DJ Augustine is their point guard. That's. I mean, he was good last year, but how? That's a little troublesome. I'm really on the fence with this one. I think I'm gonna go over. Let's get, let's get to 500, Orlando Magic. I'm on the bandwagon. Let's go. Next up, let's stay in Florida. You mentioned them. The Heat, the Miami Heat, 43 and a half games here for them. Jimmy Butler in South Beach. Will, do you like the Heat? Yeah, I have the Heat going uh, over this year. Uh, I, I like their talent. I, I like the addition of Butler on a team that could never close games. I think he'll be a good addition to the squad. Uh they seem to have a little uh, continuity with their players now. These players have been playing together for a while. Adding Butler to the mix will be good. I, I like. I think they're really going to get something out of uh, their rookie Tyler Hero, and uh, I, I see this team in the middle of the pack in the East, and I have them at uh, uh, forty-five wins. I have them over. Steve. Yeah, I saw Jimmy Butler first time last year. I'm with Will there. Uh, he manufactures wins himself, so I think. That alone, that addition alone, will get them over. And I think that they're gonna they're gonna want to be a team that's fighting for a home court uh, first round playoff advantage. So I'll take them over. We're in agreement. I like the over for the Miami Heat as well. They're also another team that could potentially look to get a second star with Jimmy Butler. Um, so we, we be on the lookout for a trade from them. But they they have some nice pieces. They're they're long. They should be. Pretty good defensively. I like Miami. Uh, I feel pretty good about that one. Next up, the Chicago Bulls, man. The Bulls here are at 32 and a half. Big jump from last season. Vegas likes what they're doing. Will, do you? This is another one that I definitely struggled with. Uh, um, I, I don't even remember what I did with them. Uh, yeah, I have them going over this year. I think they're really going to try and make that jump into respectability you always struggle when a team is on the rise are they going to just fall back into tank mode or are they going to really try and make that jump into as you said respectability uh i'm gonna go i'm gonna go with respectability route uh, i like marking in as a uh, three-point shooter they've got a lot of young pieces that have been here for a while they uh, have some depth now at point guard they added kobe white and he, he'll be an interesting rookie to watch. Yeah, I have them as, as a slate over, around 37 wins. Steve? Yeah, I'm, I'm with Will there as well. Here we go. We're on the agreement train. Um, you know, I don't I don't 30, see... 35, sorry to interrupt you. 35 wins, not 37. That's a little... Yeah. And, you know, e even still, it's over. I, I don't see, you know, a team that's going to go nuts or two teams that are going to go nuts and be 65 wins so i think that there will be wins to add i think you know if we're thinking philly and and milwaukee the top end that they're going to be is mid to upper 50s i think there'll be some there'll be some parity there in the middle and i think the bulls will will uh 
benefit from that. I mean, also Dash is wearing a, a red, red, black, and white Jordan uh, onesie the other week. So you know, I, we got we got to get the Bulls back in it. The only problem I see with the Bulls is Michael Jordan isn't playing for them. That's a big problem. <laughs> I think this is a trap. I don't. I don't trust these Bulls. I mean. A year ago, we were making fun of them. They were like the most dysfunctional team. I just don't know if they've they've fixed everything. I don't is Ma- is Markin in their best player? I don't, Levine? I don't know. Like I I think they're just a young team. I think they'll be better than they were last year for sure. But I don't know if they're going to be that much better. And there is always the posturing for a higher draft pick with the Bulls. So. I'm actually going to go under with you guys just to make it fun here. Next up, the Atlanta Hawks. They kind of overperformed a little bit last year. They did a nice job. Bit of a fun team to watch. Trey Young's always good good watch. 33 and a half for this one. Uh, Steve, what do you think about the Hawks? That's a big jump for them too, right? Last year, weren't they like 21-ish? They won uh, 29. But, but I'm saying they're over under. Wasn't it like 20? It, it was, was like low. the 20s, correct? Yeah. 22 and a, yeah, 22 and a half. 22 and a half. To jump up that much to me, oh, that's that's tricky. I mean, I think that that number is, if anything, a, a little generous. I could see them kind of hit right, hitting right at it. Man, that's tricky. I'll say, just for the sake of saying it, I'll say under. I could see 31 to 33. So... With that being said, we'll go under. Well, yeah, another tricky one here, uh, a team that's st- trying to build and trying to create something. I have them actually going uh, slightly over and continuing the progress, some of the progress they made last year. Uh, I have to tell you, though, it's one of those things I don't have a good feel for where they are in the development process. They have a couple rookie. They still have a couple rookies. Trey Young's only in his second year. Collins is a very good player, uh, but... I mean, they're going to be relying on DeAndre Hunter and Cam Reddish to get minutes, and I, I really don't know. I have them as an over, and I'll just stick with that, but uh, it's not a confident one. I have no idea what to do with these Atlanta Hawks. One thing I do love is they have Alan Crabb now. That could be worth at least five wins, right? Exactly. Great net. But, yeah, it's a it's an, a young roster. I, I have them as a slight over two, but it, I really don't feel great about it. I don't know how much better they're going to be than they were last year. I, I really like Torian Prince. He's on the Nets now. feel good about him. But, and we'll see. Vince Carter, 42 years old. <laughs> He's still playing it's a decent minutes a game. Yep. I mean, it, it, it's uh, Evan Turner's on that team now. I'll go slight over. Um, but, yeah, I'm with Will. I don't, I don't feel great about it. A team that I definitely don't feel good about, the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, they lost Kemba. Kemba really the only guy who kept them in games. This number is 23 and a half games. Will, we'll start with you. What do you think about the Hornets? This is a, this is to me is a, a, the first one that's been easy in a while. And the Hornets are going to be a fantastic under this year. They lost their top two scorers in, in uh, Lamb and in Walker. And they are just going to be the worst team in the East this year, and perhaps, if not, the worst team in the league. Uh, I have them at 18 wins. There's really nothing more we need to discuss about them, uh, in my opinion. I, I think they just, they're, they're going to be a pretty awful team. Michael Jordan needs to sell that team. That, he's got to go. Yeah. Sorry, I know you guys are both Tar Heel fans. Steve, what do you think? Yeah, we were talking about Jordan earlier. Being able to help out the Bulls, I don't think he could help out this uh, Charlotte Hornets team. Um, <laughs> You know, it, it's it's funny because you can't just go into tank mode anymore, as we saw last year, and, and guarantee yourself the top spot. But I think that they'll still try to do everything they can to at least be in the running for one of those top three or four spots. So I'm with Will that I think we're going to see a, see a pretty solid under from the Bobcats. Under, under, under. You don't even know the team name. That's not a good sign for them this season. <laughs> They're going to go back to their Bobcat ways. Weren't they in the lockout year when they ate 56? Exactly. That's <laughs> the exact track they're going. Maybe he's, he's on to something here. Let's go to another team that is a little bit down in the dumps right now, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Their number is 24 and a half. Again, a very young team. Steve, what do you think about the Cavs here? 
I just poo pooed all over the Bobcats. I mean the Hornets. I'll give them an. I'll give them over. Um, I don't think it'll be by much. I think they'll be a mid twenties team, mid twenty win team. But I don't see them also being on that same track as the Hornets. So I'll go. I'll go slight over. I'm going to disagree and say they're going to be a slight under. I just don't think they have the talent yet to even get wins in this league. Colin Sexton was one of the worst rookies. He'll ha- he'll have to improve, but he was an awful, awful rookie, especially on the defensive end. It was like historically bad. I, I just don't see this team uh, really performing very well this year. I-, I-, I'm gonna, I think it's just a little safer to take the under. They'll be one of the teams that other teams look to get wins against. And, uh, and uh, so, yeah, I'm under. I have them under as well. Um, they've got the young guys who I think are going to be trying, so I don't think they're going to be in complete tank mode, but I don't think they're going to be very good defensively. They're going to be young, lose games. And then Kevin Love, you throw him in there. Everyone's talking about him as a trade chip. He could be out of there. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna be safe too and take the under on the Cavs. Let's go to the defending NBA champions. How how could we go this long without talking about them? The T dot Toronto Raptors, forty six and a half is the number. This is an interesting one. We always go over on this podcast with Toronto. Are you doing it this time, Will? I love that the number is forty six and a half. It makes me happy. They're just a solid organization, and I am confident again that they will figure out a way to win 50 games i have them at a 51 and 31 probably fighting for the third seed in the east so i have them as a confident over i mean what more do you have to say they have a, they lost Kawhi leonard but they still have a strong strong organization a strong infrastructure and pascal siakam it proved in the playoffs that he's a, a solid player uh, they're going to get OG OG back this year, and I, I, I like them offensively. I like them defensively. I think they just have a lot of versatility, and they'll win a lot of games in the regular season. And that's it. Dash, tell us what you think. I need to hear two words there, Pascal Siakam. He was scary, man. He kind of had his coming out party uh, end of the year and into the playoffs. Uh, he hurt he hurt Philly pretty good there a few of those games. So, you know, Will brings up a good point. They'll, they'll probably be fighting for that third or fourth spot, and that means that they'll be an upper 40, low 50, or right at 50 win team. So I'm with them there, and I'm going to take the over. I just got one question. Do you, do you think there's a chance that Masai could blow this team up and, like, build around Siakam? Like, he's got, there's got a lot of older veteran players that they brought in for that championship year. Could he midseason just blow this entire thing up? I think that he thinks so. Come on, like he thinks of, of Toronto as like a landing spot at this point now because they did win a title by getting Kawhi. So I don't, I don't think it'll be fire sale. You've got Drake on the on the sideline, so you you know it's it's instant fame. It's you know instantly going to be a talked about type of team. So I, I I don't think I don't think he would want to do that too. It, it really. It really irks Maverick fans that the Mavericks didn't defend their title in 2011. And obviously losing Kawhi here is a, a different story. But uh, GMs don't want on their resume 42 wins and an 8 seed or a missed playoffs even to get into the lottery because they sold all their assets the next year. They're a smart team. I think they're going to keep it together. I mean, obviously they have an old players, but I think they're going to keep it together. All right. I'll, uh, I'll go over with you guys. But uh, my, my, my antenna is up with them. Last team here in the East, a team that I have just been <laughs> dead wrong with forever. I'm always – I don't know why. The Wizards are always a joke, and I'm always optimistic about them. And they let me down every single year. I said the same exact thing on the podcast last year, and I still took their over. Their number this year is 27 and a half. I got to think about the Wizards. Well, what do you? Th- I finally got them right after years of being too optimistic with them. I'm going to continue to say they're on their on the path to one of the worst teams in the league. They're going to. I have them as going under. I, I don't think Bradley Beal is long for that team. I think John the league has passed John Wall by, and they really don't have anything else except his albatross contract. And they're going to go on a full scale rebuild for over several years. Uh, so. I have them as an under. 
Steve? Dude, the, the Caps just won the Stanley Cup. The Nats are in the World Series. Not every, and I know that the Redskins are a dumpster fire, but not every team in D.C. Uh, can be good. So we're going under here. I tried to tell you last year, Tom, we'll listen, but I have no faith. No faith in that organization. Under. They'll be a mid-20 win team. They'll kind of be hovering right around, uh, who did I say, maybe the Bulls were? Yeah. No, not even Bulls. Who did I say? Oh, around the Cavs. I see those two teams kind of paralleling each other, so we'll go mid-20s, under. I'll go under two and hope that – I just hope Bradley Beal gets traded and he can go to a new team so we can watch him because he's a really good player. And he's he's the one re- – I think they want to tank, and he's the one reason they can't. So, you know, they have so much money tied up in those guys. They just need to get high draft picks and cheap, cheap rookies. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go under with you guys. No more – optimistic Tom for the Wizards. Watch them go over. It's going to happen now. Guys, Eastern Conference, we did it in under 40 minutes. It's pretty good. We're learning. <laughs> we are definitely learning. we got a great new sponsor i got to tell you about. The football season, as we all know, is in full swing. So get into the game with our exclusive sports betting partners, betonline.ag. Sign up today to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit to start betting college or professional ball. Every spread, every total, every winner or loser, straight bet, parlay, or tease your way through the season. You can even bet on wild proposition bets like who will be the first head coach to get canned. Will the Dolphins actually win a game? Is 0-16 really going to happen? Get the fastest to market odds, updates, and payouts with our new sportsbook partners, betonline.ag. Head over to website today or use your mobile device to join and use the promo code CLN. S50 to receive your 50% welcome bonus. BetOnline.ag, your online sportsbook experts. Let's jump right in. The LA Clippers, the, the team that everyone's saying basically won the summer. Kawhi Leonard, Paul George on that, you know, you got Pat Beverly, you got a really nice foundation here. Harrell, 54 and a half games is the number for the Clips. Will, what do you like here? Well, I am going to be a bit contrarian and go just a slight under, 53 or 54 wins. I'm going to go with the old saying that we're, when we looked at the Heat, when they put together a brand new team, it took them a while to gel. I know Kawhi is just at the peak of his powers right now, but maybe you get 55 games out of him. That's just what he does. And... Uh, the rest of their rotation, they've got some good young pieces, but they have some older players as well. And that rotation, they lost a lot of some of their great depth. I, I, I think Shea Gilgis Alexander is a fantastic player, and it, it, his loss will actually be felt. And um, I don't know. I think they're just going to be gunning for a, a home court advantage in the first round, and uh, that's all their goal is for the regular season: just to have one series of home court. And so I have. 53, 54 wins. Steve, you're out in La La Land. What are they saying? Dude, I almost, and you know this, I almost bought season tickets last year because after going to the Sixers and Lakers game, the people in the concourse were telling me how pathetic the showing is in the Clippers arena. So I was like, hey, get some cheap season tickets, see some great teams. I didn't do it, and then look what happened. So Awful. George and Kawhi Leonard still a little bitter about it, as you can tell. Uh, I want to say over here, but I do agree with Will that we're definitely not going to see Kawhi Leonard playing 75-plus games. That being said, I don't know if they'll be just content with, like, a four seed. I think they'll want to be a one or two. Just to be contrarian to Will, I'll say over. We'll see what happens. I get to break the tiebreaker, and I am going under here. It's a thing where they're on paper the best team in the West, and they probably will be come playoff time they're going to be just as good defensively as uh philly i think they're going to be just really brutal defensively and then you've got freaking Kawhi at the end of games he's going to be just amazing uh come playoff time but regular season little like the warriors the last couple years you know they don't they don't really need to worry about home court advantage too much uh throughout the playoffs and Paul George, load management, he's, he's injured. Kawhi Leonard, definitely load management. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna take the under on the 54 and a half as well. Let's go to that other team in Los Angeles, the LA Lakers. LeBron, Anthony Davis. Oh my God, let's go. 51 and a half games is the number for them. Steve, what do you think about the Lakers? Lakers Staples is gonna be rocking. Man, you know my thoughts on LeBron drives me crazy, but. 51 and a half. I, I think they're going to go over. Uh, you're telling me that that he and Anthony Davis are only allowed to lose 30 games. Yeah. I'll, I'm taking that over. Well, um, I'm going to try and I'll disagree with Steve on this one and take the under only really because they have a very, very thin lineup in a very difficult conference. And if Anthony Davis or LeBron James gets nicked up at all. It's going to be a bunch of – it's a great-looking team from like seven, eight years ago, the rest of their team, uh, and, and Kyle Kuzma. I just don't – I just worry about the fact that they have very little depth and they're very top-heavy. LeBron, when he was completely healthy, was still just squeaking in with 51, 52 wins for Cleveland. What's this? Is he really going to do that in a very difficult Western Conference, even with Anthony Davis as a running mate? Because he's got even less supporting cast than he did in previous seasons. So, I, I have him at 49 wins this year. So I'm taking them under. Ooh, another tie. I, I this is um, this was a really tough one for me. Am I crazy to think that LeBron's lost a step? Are you saying that rhetorically or asking? No, I'm saying, asking you. I, I think he's lost. I think he's lost a little step. I, I, I think Kawhi, I would rather have Kawhi Leonard for the first time. I'd rather have like say Kawhi Leonard and maybe Katie's pure scoring at the end of games than have LeBron James. And that's about the first time I could say. Last year was the first time I could say that. Yeah, like watching him last year, he he's a little slower than we've seen LeBron in in past years. Uh, Steve, what do you think? Some of this I'd wonder, though, knowing the season that he was going to have last year. I mean, he figured it out pretty soon, that pretty early on, that they weren't going to be a number one, number two, number three seed in the playoffs. Um, I think he figured it out early that he was just going to take a redshirt year, let his body heal up, and be ready to run. Be, be ready to run it. You know, come twenty nineteen, twenty twenty. I'm not saying he hasn't lost a step. I don't. I agree with everything you guys said there. I think that he's, it's not a, it's not a guarantee that he is the pound for pound, or not even pound for pound, just the best player in the world anymore. Um, there is debate. There, there is a little uncertainty there. So I just wonder if this is like a, a, a put a chip on his shoulder type of year. Um, you know, not saying that he's going to go out there and try to get 60 wins. I agree with Will that he, he definitely, likes to do as little as possible in the regular season just to get himself prepped and ready for the playoffs. But, yeah, him losing a step, I think, is weighing on, uh, will weigh on his mind, and I think, you know, that that's kind of what's propelling me to, to take the slide over. Look, can I jump in for one second? Yeah. I'm, 30, I'm 36 years old, and you all know me. I'm a professional athlete. Yeah. But your body, Savvy. you lose you lose spring. You, you do. I, I, it's the first thing I lost. And with all the, it's, it doesn't come back. You lose it, you get a half step slower and it doesn't come back. He is still one of the best players in the world because he's the smartest player in the world. He's got the best vision. He's got the best feel for the game. He's still great, but he, he has lost 15 to 18% of his athleticism. And that's a big difference from playing against 27 to 27 year olds. So just putting that out there. I agree with everything you just said. I think he, I think he's lost a little bit of a step, and I, I, it's going to be tough to watch. Like he's LeBron, he's the best. We kind of we're just so used to him being so amazing, and he's done it longer than basically anyone's ever done it. It's like Kareem, but you know, Anthony Davis is I think going to have a monster season, but. I'm going to go uh, under on the Lakers, even though I think, you know, LeBron and Anthony Davis basically should mean 50 wins. Like, there's uh, there's no doubt about it, but I'm going to go under. This is definitely a team that's probably going to have drama throughout the season, and, you know, we'll see how many games LeBron plays. He might – he I'm sure he knows where he's at, and he he's all about the playoffs. So I'm going to go under on the Lakers. Let's move on from them. Let's talk about the Houston Rockets – team that 
without the Warriors, might have a couple rings. Gotten so close. They make the big trade, getting rid of Chris Paul, bringing in Russell Westbrook. Their number here is 53 and a half games. Will, what do you think about the Rockets? I have the Rockets as a slight under this year. Jeez. I promise I do have some overs in the West. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I, I, Mike D'Antoni's offense is an offense where you fire a lot of three-point shots. And the one thing I know about Russell Westbrook is he is the worst three-point three shooter in the league. And that's not hyperbole. That's just fact. He, he's been the worst three-point shooter for years. Yep. And um, the rest of the roster is starting to age. It's a top-heavy, star-heavy roster. I, I like the fact that they're all, the Rockets will always be able to play with either Russ or Harden on the floor at all times, so they'll always have leadership. But Russ will detract from Harden's offensive brilliance. He, he's just too high a usage player. He, he will cede to Harden the scoring role, but he's too high a usage player not to have an effect. And they won 53 games last year. I, I think they're going to step back a tiny bit in a very difficult conference, and I have them winning 52 games this year. Steve, what do you think? Yeah, I'm with Will there, slight under. It will be interesting to have those two back together, but, I mean, he said it all. Three, the, Dan Tony's offense relies on the three. I mean, there'll, there'll be a night where where Russell Westbrook's going to go two for 12 from three or two for 15 from three. So, um, you know, while they'll be in the hunt, they'll be in the thick of it for, you know, solid playoff position. I'll say under as well. You guys make good points about the D'Antoni offense, but I'm bullish on the on the Rockets. I'm going to go over here. This is a, another team that I seem to get wrong every year. Every time I go under, they overachieve, and then I go over, they suck. But I'm going to go over with them. Um, it's just a lot of lot of good good players on that team, and they're going to be so hard to defend. And they've got guys who can hit clutch shots at the end. I love Gar- Eric Gordon. I think Capella could have a bounce back year la- this year. He was he was definitely off last year. Started to get it going a little bit in the playoffs. I think Capella with those guys, they're just going to be in attack mode. I think they're just going to be going crazy. So I'm I'm going against you guys on this one. We'll see how it pans out. I'm going with the Rockets. Let's talk some Dub Nation here. Warriors, my boy D'Angelo Russell on this team. I'm really hoping he does well and. I think it could be a good situation for him. I think this could be a fun team to watch uh, offensively. Their number is 47 and a half games here. Uh, Steve, let's start with you. What do you think about the dubs? So that 47 and a half number, is that just a little slightly disrespectful to both Steph and Draymond because they're both healthy, correct? Correct. Yeah, um, I think i got to go over with them. Clay's going to come back at some point. <laughs> Maybe late in the year, what are they? What are they thinking there? Like a Marchish type return, possibly post March. All- yeah, yeah. Post so, All Star, post All Star break. I think they'll stay close enough to that number, and then you know the return of Clay. They'll get back to that offense, and uh, again, them with KD was incredible. Don't get me wrong, but you know they add D'Angelo Russell. There's just going to be bombs from thirty plus feet all over the court. Um, New arena, they're going to want to showcase it pretty well. So I'm going to say over. Will, you agree? Yeah, I agree with Steve. This is a very close over. I had 48 wins. And this was this was a team I decided to guess before I ever looked at the over-under. And I picked 48 as my number. And, of course, it was so freaking close. Uh, but, yeah, I'm going to go with Steve. I agree. I, I think Steph is going to want to try and have one last crack at an MVP type year, at least with the shooting splits. Uh, obviously, they're going to miss Clay's two way game, and they're going to just try and I don't know bomb teams off the floor with their offense. Uh, I do worry that all those minutes have put, taken a toll on this team, and but I, I do I do think they have they have heart and they want to showcase their arena, showcase their their own talents, and I have them winning forty eight games. Yeah, you know I've got a soft spot for Steph. He's really going to have to play like an MVP for them, I think, to get over this number. I'm definitely a little worried about them defensively in the backcourt. I mean, I I watched D'Angelo Russell, not the best defender. Steph, not really the best defender. They're undersized. And, you know, they lost Iguodala. They lose Clay. Those are 
definitely important pieces defensively, probably more so in the playoffs than the regular season. In the regular season, the Warriors might be able to just outscore everybody. So I'm really on the fence with this one. I'll take the over just because I want to root for the Warriors and I want to root for Steph. But I don't, I don't know if it's a lock. I, I think it's, it's going to be a very interesting year in Golden State, to say the least. Let's talk. Let's talk about uh, the Denver Nuggets. Dash is into that. Dash, you all right? Dude, he's he's eating and he's coughing because he's just confused as to why we want to talk Nuggets. No, I'm just kidding, guys. Yeah, he's 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 choking like Denver choked in the uh, yes. in the playoffs. Yes. Fifty three and a half games for the Nuggets. Here is the number. They won 54 last year. Kind of surprised everybody. They played really, really well. Jokic uh, apparently does translate to team wins. Will, do you like the Nuggets this year? Yeah, I went against my better judgment and took the under on that team for some strange reason, and I'm, they're usually a solid over for me. Uh, I still, yeah, I like uh, I like the Nuggets over this year. I think they're going to be gunning for that number one seed in the West. They're going to be a, a good to great regular season team. They're going to have a lot of depth. Uh, they added uh, Jeremy Grant that will help solidify their defense. Um, he's a very solid def- wing defender. And Jokic is still going to be that transcendent force, both well, offensively and he's a good positional defender as well. Uh, hopefully Jamal Murray takes another step forward. And uh, I like this team. I like this team to win 58 games this year. Steven Dash, what do you like? Man, he makes a compelling argument that that will. Um, part of me wanted to say that they would be a slight under, but you know, just kind of remembering that they're in Denver, they're playing a mile high. I'll, I'll roll. I'll roll with that. That over. You know, again, we're not talking that there's going to be a 73 win team or multiple 60 win teams this year. I don't think so. I think these teams will be able to kind of. A few teams will be able to hover, hover in that mid 50 win range. I think the Nuggets will be one of them. So let's go over. I love the Nuggets this year. I'm going to go over with you guys. Definitely in agreement. You mentioned, you know, the mile high altitude, 34 and seven for the Nuggets <laughs> last year. They always play really well at home, it's even an, when they have bad it's an teams. Advantage, man. It's a huge regular season advantage. Such an advantage, and they had a losing record on the road last year. Do you guys know that? Crazy. So I, I, I love the continuity, I think, and I, and I think another year together. Uh, allows that road record to, to improve. My point so. exactly. I love the continuity. Everybody's back. This is definitely a team that's in win now mode. They could try to make a little trade, try to get one more piece in there. They there's always reports that they're being aggressive, trying to get another kind of star in there with Jokic and Murray. So I like Denver a lot. They seem to like playing with each other. I'm all about the Nuggets this year. Let's talk about the Utah Jazz. A lot of people high on the Jazz. This has kind of been a thing where they finish season strong and everyone kind of jumps on the Jazz bandwagon. This has happened like the last two or three seasons. They got Conley now. People are very excited about that, a veteran who can help some of the scoring load uh, with Donovan Mitchell there. 54 and a half games here for Utah. Big number for them. Best defensive team maybe in the league? We'll, we'll see. Will, what do you think about the Jazz? I like the Jazz. I The Jazz are going to be competing for uh, like a three or a four seed out west, maybe, in my opinion. I, I just have them as a slight under. The, the This win total keeps going up as they add players, and they are a defensive-minded squad. But in the regular season, you can catch hot shooting from time to time, and... I just don't see them winning that many games. 55 games is a lot of games to win in the West. Uh, so I, I, I like them as a slight under, kind of similar to what they did last year, a better record than last year. But, again, they'll just miss their over. And, um, yeah, I mean, they had some great additions. They, they added Bogdanovich. They added Conley. They bring back Gobert. Donovan Mitchell will go back into his more of a comfortable two-guard role. But uh, I think it's a tough conference. It's a big number, and I have them as a slate under. Steve, I'm with Will. Um, they did they did their thing to add some some firepower to their team, but think about the other teams around them and what they've done. So you've got LeBron and you've got AD, you've got Kawhi and you've got Paul George, you've got Russ and James Harden together. You know, there's are going to be some hard fought battles all year. Um, so I think again. 
it's really good parity. Going to be some mid fifty win teams, a bunch of them. Uh, I'm just going to have to say under, slight under two, like 52, 53 wins. They're going to be right around that number, but not quite to it. This is a hard one for me. Utah's definitely burned me the last couple of years. I've been waiting for their ascendance, and I don't know. I mean, they defensively are a lot better than everyone around the league. They're just really, really strong, and now they have a little bit more offensive firepower, like you mentioned. They could definitely do it. The number does seem a little bit high, so I don't really want to get burned by them, so I'll go under on the Jazz. Next up, the Portland Trailblazers. I was (laughs) dead wrong about them last year. We thought we thought for sure C.J. McCollum was getting traded. They did a really nice I, job. I actually remember seeing their number and being like, wait, is C.J. McCollum and Dame Lillard still on their team? Because it was shocking to me. Yeah, I think Vegas thought that they were breaking that up. And they way overperformed. 53 wins last year. Dame Lillard was unbelievable. MVP candidate. He was fantastic. They made it all the way to the Western Conference Finals. This year, their number is 46 and a half games. Could they take a step back here? Steve, what do you think? Again, a really low number for a pretty solid team. Um, it's what scares me is the fact that I've, you know, gone over on the Clips, gone over on the Nuggets, gone over on the Lakers, gone a slight over on the Warriors. And I know I talked about that, you know, a lot of teams being around that mid 50 win total, but someone's going to have to be the sacrificial lamb for that all to happen. So I'll take a slight under with the Trailblazers. Very slight. And I may regret it because I think I went over last year on them and was correct, but yep, I'll flip. I'm going to agree with Steve. I have them as a slight under as well. They added Hassan Whiteside to go along with Nurkic and uh, Zach Collins as their front line. But it, 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 Whiteside I just don't think is a very good player anymore. I think he's a little tough to deal with. I, I don't, I don't, do you know when Nurkic is coming back, anyone? No, they don't. I don't think they've t- said think anything they have yet. I don't timeline, yeah. Well, regardless, it's he's a he's a big man, and that was a gruesome injury, and he, we, he might not be the same, or he certainly won't be the same as he was. So they're going to be a little thinner on the front line uh, this year. They lost some wing depth. Uh, they're going to miss Avenue, and um, I, I just think they're going to have a problem defending, and it, the the conference again got better. And I have them uh, kind of – they hit their peak last year making a Western Conference Finals, a surprise Western Conference Finals. And that, even that will take a little toll on them and their legs. And I have them as a slate under. Yeah. yeah I. Uh, this, you were going to say over, weren't you, Terrific? I was going to say over. I feel like people are definitely a little bit down on Portland right now, and I, I get it. I thought Evan Turner was actually kind of an important piece to them, not just on the court, but in the locker room. The Nurkic injury, obviously a a big deal. We have no idea what we're going to get from Hassan Whiteside. Tough to argue that Dame Lillard can play any better than he did last year. Are we waving bye-bye to the the Trailblazers? I'm going to take, I'm going to go against you guys. I'm going to go over. I'm going to, I'm going to stick with it. I think Dame is still an MVP kind of guy. McCollum is great. You know, the the core of that team is back. They could try to make a move. I like the continuity of them. And it's another team that always has a really strong home court advantage, 32-9 and nine last year. They'll be good again at home, I think, this year. I'll uh, I'll go over. Let's, let's get to 47 wins, Portland. I'm back on the bandwagon. Next up, the San Antonio Spurs. 46 and a half games is their number this year. We were worried Popovich was that was his last year last year. We were also wrong about that. I mean, we have faith in Pop always. Man, that's a tough number. I'm gonna say slight under again. Kind of similar thing to what I was saying with Portland. Man, I really don't want to do it, but I'm just gonna say slight under and just move on. I'm done. Well, I have an over for the Spurs this year. They are definitely a win now team, and I just don't see them as the type of organization that is going to dismantle things. They have uh, Murray back this year to go along with some of their other pieces Uh, i just think they'll figure out a way to navigate you know navigate their way over that number uh, this year i I don't look at them as a contender but i look at them as a seventh seed or a sixth seed in the west and yeah i have them in there i like the spurs too i'm uh i have them over i think they're gonna be pretty good this year last year i remember going into the year they had so many injuries they were so banged up and they 
you know, just did their Spurs thing and won a ton of games, and they won 40 games last year, banged up. They're healthy this year. Again, another good team at home. They got some veterans. I like the Spurs a lot, Pop. I'm going over on them. The Pelicans, this is going to be a fun team. Zion, Lonzo, they've got a lot of interesting characters on this team. Can they make it work? 39 and a half is the number for the Pellies. Will, what do you think about the Pelicans? This is a team that I'm rarely right on. This is always one of those teams that I have trouble with. But I just, I, I think there's something special brewing with this roster. They basically they have a bunch of players coming off uh, some tough times with the Lakers and, and Lonzo Ball and Brandon Ingram, and I think those two are really going to blossom in a new system. I think the backcourt of Lonzo Ball and Drew Holiday is going to be fantastic, great defensive backcourt definitely. But I, I think it's gonna, they're going to work well together. I think Zion will be an impact rookie in, in, in the rare sense of the word, but he will be impactful. He'll be an above average player in this league coming out of the gates. It, maybe maybe to the level of a Shaquille O'Neal level or something like that in terms of the impact he has just as a rookie. And they added J.J. Redick. They have some shooting. I, 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 don't, I like the, the addition of Derek Favors to go along with some of their other debt, depth. And uh, I, I have them as a 500 team this year, 41 and 41. But I, I think it'll be similar to, say, like Cleveland's rookie year with uh, LeBron or, you know, a really – but better. They have some better parts than that, obviously. I, I have them at 41 and 41. Steve? I'm in agreement yeah. there with Will. I think um, I think they're a slight over. I think there's some magic there with Mr. Zion. Having J.J. Redick is never a bad thing because you need that sniper. And, uh, yeah, so I'm going to say, say slight over as well. This team is a team that just has so many talented guys on it, and I just have no idea if it's going to work and how they're going to mesh. I think it could take them a little bit – to kind of figure out how to mesh together, I think the pe- they're going to be good in like a year or two. I'm gonna I'm gonna go against you guys. I'm gonna go under. I think I think people are excited about the Pelicans and just the, the, these. There's a lot of good names on this team. People are like fired up to watch them. I'm gonna I'm gonna go under on them. I'm gonna I'm gonna zag on this one. Um, but you know I wouldn't be shocked if they went over. But I'll I'll say they can they can be under 500 this year. They're they're gonna be very young. Dallas, interesting team here. Porzingis, Will, Will's, you know, he was the future. <laughs> now he's Am I allowed to, are, are we allowed to talk about him anymore? <laughs> is, is that cool? Let's talk <laughs> can about. We like, can we even like him? Doncic is a great guy. Let's uh, focus on Doncic. Dallas is number here, forty and a half. They're trying to climb up a little bit. By the way, Porzingis jacked out of his mind i don't know if you saw that picture like what's going on with him uh will we'll start with you all right yeah so the dallas over under is 40 and a half wins and i like the under this year i think they're about a year away from being a very good squad but i just don't think they're gonna mesh in a difficult west i think they're gonna have some some difficulties defensively i i I love luca as you know i think he's one of the best rookies i've seen but I just don't see this team being ready yet to really contend or to really make that jump into the next level. They'll be they'll be an entertaining one of the best teams to watch, but I just don't think they're going to quite get to the 500 mark this year. And I don't think they really care if they get to the 500 mark this year. I think that next year will be like the year that they might they'll make a big leap. I just don't think it's going to be a year away. Steve, I'm going to agree with there. Um, I mean, I think they've got. Great pieces, obviously, but we also got to remember that Porzingis has now sat out for how long? Almost his entire career. Yeah. Maybe he's going to need a little bit of uh, time to, to be, bust that rust. And with that being said, I think they may get off to a little bit of a slow start and you know, maybe ca- catch a little momentum at the end of the year, but enough that it's just going to keep him just above, below 500. So I'm with Will. I really want to take the over here. I really do. They're gonna be good. So do it, bro. This is your pod. You can you can step on um, step out on the ledge. You can disagree with us on every pick if you want. No, I'm really bad last year. That's I know, my right? Strategy. That's been the play. No, I'll I'll go under because I, I just don't know exactly what we're gonna get from that team, and I, I know people are probably pretty excited about them. So I'm I'm gonna go under on Dallas. Let's let's move on to Sacramento. Their number here, thirty-seven and a half. 
They were a fun team to watch last year. De'Aaron Fox really came onto the scene. Buddy Heal. this is a fun team, and people are fired up about them. Can they build on their success last year? Steve, what do you think? It's a really good question. I think they were a team that I still felt was going to be in tank mode, uh, but I guess they feel like they have enough pieces to uh, to go for it. Um, what, was, what was their win total again last year? Remind me, say it again. They won 39 last year. Yeah. I could see it hovering around the same, 38, 39, which will put them over. So I'll, I'll go a slight, very slight half game to a game and a half over on the Kings. You know, again, like all the all the firepower up top makes me kind of want to take them as a slight under, but I'll, I'll believe. I'll drink the Kool Aid a little bit. Well, I agree with Steve. I have them at thirty nine wins again this year. Most of the projections I see them around that mark too, and I do like their trajectory. I don't think they want to have a pullback. They've had they've been in, they've been such a frustrating franchise for so long that I really think they like their new pieces. I think they love their leadership in Fox and Heald, and I think the two of them are going to be the guys they, they ride with now. And I think they're going to continue to the level off this year, but I don't think they want to take a step back, and I don't think they're, I don't think they will take a step back. I think they're going to take a step forward. Not forward, but level, but level's good for them right now. Yeah, I'm with you guys. I'll go over on the Kings. Bagley, in his uh, second year, I think is going to have a, a bigger role on this team. With Cauley Stein gone, I think I think Sacramento will be fun to watch. They're definitely going to be trying, so I'll go over with them. This is an interesting one: the OKC Thunder. I'm nope. over under how quickly is Chris Paul out of there? Yeah, I mean that is uh, that is a thing people are talking about. He, I'm sure, wants to get out of there. You know, some people are saying Miami. There's there's been some teams floated out for him, uh, but they got a lot of. Good young pieces from the Clippers in that trade. They also got Gallinari, who we like. Uh, Thirty-two and a half is their number. Will, what do you think about the Thunder? I have them going under, and it's strange. I wanted to take them over so badly because I do think Westbrook has a negative, has a certain amount of negative effect on team chemistry and just team because of his extreme usage rate. But some team's going to have to lose, and I think that this team is going to. Fed Chris Paul. Uh, I love Gallinari as a player, but that was last year was his first year. I think he was healthy for a season, so he might go back to his old ways, being injured. Stephen Adams is the oldest, like twenty five or twenty six year old I've ever seen, and I, I love St. Gilgeous Alexander. He will be great. But I think he's, he's still about a year away from being the force of their team, and I think this will be one more year where they contract and they start to build around Shea, but it's this year is going to be one more year of kind of dismantling. I think their over-under suggests that. They're begging you to take the over on this team, but I'm just going to have them under. Steve, is that Chris Paul I hear in the background babysitting? Yeah, he's babysitting. Sorry, I thought I was on mute. I forgot that I had to hit it on Cliff yet. Ball. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's Cliff Paul. He's selling insurance. Um, I'm with Will there, slight under. I, don't, I can't see Chris Paul finishing out this year in Oklahoma City. And I think them punting on Russell means that they're ready to try to go to go into rebuild mode. So this is year one of that. And I've seen it. It's not pretty. But we'll see if they can come out of the other side. That, all that being said, under. Yeah, I'm going to – I'll join you guys on the under here. It's, it's just tough to know exactly what to expect. There's a lot of moving pieces with this. And the mood's obviously not great in OKC right now. So – I will, uh, I'll go under, but they're, they'll be trying. Next up, the Minnesota Timberwolves. Just a team kind of in no man's land right now. 35 and a half is their number. Steve, what do you think of the T-Wolves? T-Wolves, man. A team that, you know, the Cats, uh, Wiggins, Butler, we felt good about them last year and, um, they blew that one up. What was, remind me, what was their win total last year? Last year, they finished at 36 wins. Man, of course. I will say, I'm going to say that they're going to hover right around the uh, I think they're going to hover right around the same. So that means that i got to pick one way or the other, obviously. And I'll go, I'll go 35. I'll go under. Well, 
I'm going to disagree here. I, I really think that Carl Anthony Towns is going to have a special year. Whoa. He's going to be, very, he's going to be special. Special in the Anthony Davis kind of mode where he can carry his team to 40 wins. And I think he'll be a good enough player this year, this time in the league, to carry his team to 40 wins regardless of what's around him. I think he's a special player. I can't wait to play this back next year. <laughs> I'm with you, though. I'm going over on the Timberwolves. Why not? Let's do it. You sold me on the cat. He better play well. Wiggins is a problem. Everybody he knows it. Well. I, I'm happy for you to play it back. I think he's going to average 28 points a game this year. Wow. That, that'll be that'll be uh, on par with Markel Fultz is going to be good. Spicy hot takes from Will right now. Yeah. <laughs> Coming in firing. <laughs> on the Wolves, too, so... Yeah. Might as well go out on a limb here. Man, it would have been fun for D'Angelo Russell to go there. He's good friends with the cat. They would have been fun to watch. Yeah, those two together would have been special. Yeah, it would have been good. Next up, a team that's very special, the Memphis Grizzlies. 27 and a half for the, uh, the Grizzlies here. Up and coming team. Time to get fired up, right, Steve? I mean, this has got to be the, the bottom dweller in the conference, or at least pretty close. You know, what, them and the Suns. I'll say under. Uh, someone in that conference is bound to be a low 20s or maybe sub-20 win team, and I think that this could be the one. Well, that being said, I'm going to disagree with Steve and go over on the Memphis Grizzlies. I, I don't know why. Maybe I'm just – maybe I, I don't know. I, I think that Zach Randolph, Conley, and Gasol are still on the team. <laughs> You sure you want to do this? <laughs> I'm sure I want to. I'm sure I want to go over. I, I don't have them as. I have them as the third worst team in the comps. All right. I have them as the third worst team in the conference at about 30 wins. Either Will is in the zone right now, or we're getting towards the end of this podcast and the wheels are falling off. <laughs> when I put the records together, I, I wasn't going to make any changes. Yep. I, I said that I wrote these all down, or I put these all down, and they added up perfectly the first time, which will never happen again in my lifetime. I'm just sticking to this to the end. All right, um, and will we trust here? I'm gonna go. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go under on the Grizzlies. Um, I just I don't know. We'll see. We'll see about Memphis. I, it's tough to get really fired up about them. The team we end the pod with before we get to our finals and MVP pick, the Phoenix Suns. Man, just the basement of the league. Basically, every year their ownership is pretty horrible. They don't seem to have a clear direction of what they're trying to do. Their number this year is actually higher than the Grizzlies somehow. I have 28 and a half games for the Phoenix Suns. Will, are you also on the Suns bandwagon? I am not on the Suns bandwagon. I wanted to choose one of these two teams to go over, and I just couldn't do it with Phoenix. Now, they have had a they have a substantial jump up in their win total. From uh, yeah, almost 19, ten games. Almost ten games. So, how many wins did they have last year? They had nineteen wins last year. Correct, Tom. Yes, correct. What am, What am I missing that happened in the off season? Can you please like Devin please, Booker? Please, that, they're, they're, all, all those first round picks got a year older. Is I guess what Vegas is. Why do I say Vegas? What odds are you can place a bet anywhere? Fair. So, Odds makers are betting on uh, the talent getting a little older and them maybe just lucking into some yeah, but, this year. So, I don't so have them doing it. I have them going under. Okay. What's Devin, so what's Devin Booker's status right now? Like, what are the odds that he gets moved? Like, because that's got to be a shop. That's got to be a piece that a lot of teams want. You know, it, it could could a, could a Lakers go after him? Uh, would, or is Phoenix even considering, would they even consider moving him? I don't think they are considering moving him. I think they like think he's like the franchise guy, and they they gave him the contract. And I, I think they they actually they there's been no winning, but I think he scores a lot know. of points. He scores a lot of points. I, I'm assuming the people of Phoenix in, enjoy watching him play. I don't think they're. I mean, they maybe should think about it, but I don't think they're moving him. Hmm. Man, see, that's where that's where it makes a slight tough decision for me. What I say, I went under on OKC. I went under with the Grizz. I'll, I'll give, I'll give them twenty nine. I'll give them a bump in ten. I'll wow. be contrarian to Will. Let's go. Wow. Give them a shot. Give, give them, give them one. Give them half a game above their, above their uh, over under. Let's go. 
the wheels. I'm either, I'm, I'm, I'm either going to be just celebrating in the in the winter circle, or you guys are going to put the dunce cap on me. I mean, let's think. It, it makes. Does it make any sense why this Phoenix Suns team should be ten more wins than last year? Like, does Vegas know something we don't? It's, it scares me. Like I said, it's. Does Devin Booker get moved? That's like my. That's the one glaring thing, one glaring problem that I have with that decision. Talk, talk me off the ledge, please. Tell, tell me what you think, Tom. Because I'm with Will on everything he said. I just, I just. I mean, I, I think why. the only reason I would go over is I feel like Vegas knows something that we don't. I don't know what that might be, but I just, in good conscience, I can't. I can't do it. I have to go under on Phoenix. They just, they've shown me nothing over the last couple of years. They're not a good organization. I gotta, I gotta go under on them. All right, I'll flip it. Let's, let's end this thing the right way and in, in, in accord. So, all right, I'll go under too. All right. Well, this was good. We had a lot of disagreements this, this time around. Uh, it, it, one of us is going to be right. <laughs> I was just going to say, I feel like we had a, a, not like a ton of disagreements, but a fair amount last year. And it just didn't work out for any of them. Because, like, <laughs> at the end of the day, I think Tom and I were had the same record. And I think Will maybe had us beat by one or two wins. So we, we were all just in the dumps. I like our strategy this year of disagreeing uh, with everyone. That all almost, all, almost <laughs> every, every opportunity that came about to disagree with someone, we did. It's great. Um, this is going to be an awesome NBA season. Who is your NBA Finals pick? Will, I'll let you go first. My NBA Finals pick this year is going to be the Philadelphia 76ers versus the L.A. Clippers. The 76ers will complete the process this year. Wow. And, uh, win, the, win the title. I just got chills, man. I just threw up. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, what do you like? I know who you like, but who who, so, who are you picking? So, so I was going to you know, lead in to say that I will actually witness an NBA Finals game um, rooting for the visiting team. So clearly you know that I'm, I'm riding with my boys. It's just the question as to which, which L.A. team I'm going to pick, right? Uh, I'm going to side with Will there. I, I have the same – that's my same thought, Clippers, Sixers, um, and I obviously just got to roll with – Joel, Ben, Tobias, Big Al. I think Big Al is going to be a big ad for us. I think it's just going to free. You know, we talked about this previously when that move was made over the summer. I think it's just going to make things a lot easier on Joel, allow him to play a lot more games, but not exert as much uh, as much energy because he'll, he'll have a little bit of, of relief and support. So let's go, let's go, good guys into the NBA Finals and winning it over the Lakers, over the Clippers. Sorry. So. The Bucks have the best player to me in the East. They'd have the best player in that series against Philly, but Philly has the better supporting cast. It's, I just don't think there's any question about that. So I, I like Philly to come out of the East as well. I'm with you. In the West, though, I, I, I'm with you guys on the Clippers. I think they are the clear favorite. Who do you think the second best team in the West is? Tom, any number of teams could – come out of the West. I mean, the Lakers could, the Clippers could, Houston could, Denver could. Yeah. At least I'd put those four, I think those four have the shot this year. And, and, and let's not, I mean, we can't sleep on the Warriors. I know that they're down a man. I know that they're in, in their, their lineup isn't quite what it used to be, but you, you get them in a seven-game series when Clay's healthy, Clay's <laughs> Steph, Draymond. Ew, scary. I just don't know. I don't. I mean, do you guys really think Harden and Westbrook can go to the finals? They're the last. I, I like the Clippers, the Lakers, and Denver okay. better than Houston. But stranger things have happened than two guys I don't think will mesh me, somehow mesh. They do still have some high top end talent. Yeah, I think it's going to be Clippers, Sixers. I'm with you guys. I'm just not sure Denver is ready quite yet and i'm i really am not sold on the lakers just their depth i mean the the fact that dwight howard's on that team is a problem <laughs> I, I don't care if they, they have lebron and anthony davis but you know come playoff time they're, they're definitely going to be a very tough out so maybe maybe you're right on that i guess my nba champion i'd have to go with the i'm gonna go with the clippers tom couldn't do it couldn't do it sorry i put you in the finals don't get greedy <laughs> who's your mvp well, who you got? Still kind of up in the air, but uh, I guess I'm going to have to say Nikola Jokic. That's a good one. I like that. Steve? I like that. Steve, who do you um, like? I'm going to go back to a former MVP winner. He's down a couple men. 
He's revolutionized the game. I think Steph, to to Will's point, when we talked Warriors, you know, this is probably one of those opportunities for him to get back into an MVP discussion, and I think he does it. I don't hate it. I think Steph could have just a statistically crazy season this year, and he, he'd have Wild. to. The only I mean, thing we're talking like you know whatever the number he has for most made threes in, in a season, he could add a hundred to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You could average thirty. You could average thirty-one on forty-six percent three-point shooting, and you're like, oh, maybe you should you know, that, that, have that kind of year. Yeah. I'm going Giannis in Milwaukee. Oh, yep. You're gonna run it back, huh? I'm gonna run it back. I think he is just. He's the best, and I he's getting better. You could tell in the playoffs his his three point it was looking a little bit better, and if he just figures out the shooting a little bit, I mean he's impossible to stop. And he's going to be the best player on a very good Bucks team. They're going to win a lot of games. The East is not very good. I uh, I like if him. You're talking, if you're talking someone that could figure out a jump shot with that can't be stopped, why is not why is Ben Simmons not in your discussion there, my friend? We'll edit that part out. <laughs> <laughs> I will give a little runner-up, even though I went on the uh, under on the Lakers. Maybe Anthony Davis can have a uh, a special kind of year with LeBron sitting out some games, and AD can kind of carry them. We'll we'll see. He's but I like the Jokic pick a lot because I I like Denver too. I'm with you guys. Yeah, that, that's that's a that's a sneaky good pick there. Will I agree with that too? But um, thank you. It'll be interesting. Hey, we've got we've got the same file. Which is surprising because this is the most wide open year. I am shocked that you guys went with my finals pick. Yeah. I just don't, I don't like anyone out of the West really. I, the Clippers, I just think are going to be really, really good. If they're healthy. Come playoff time. Come playoff time. If they're healthy, I mean, Kawhi is probably the best player out West and they're going to be great defensively. They're going to be tough. Kawhi reminded us last year of who he was. Yeah, you know, again going into the season, I kind of forgot how good hey, he was. You, you guys didn't believe me last year. Yeah. No, you were you were on it. I'm not getting I'm not getting fooled again. But I will say, I mean, health is a huge thing with them. Kawhi has been banged up a lot. Paul George has really been banged up a lot. They, I mean, they That's need. That's why we went under on the regular season, Tom. Exactly. I think, which is, I think is the right move. But you know, it, they're not a lock to come out of the West just because both those guys are kind of question marks health wise. And then if they're out, then it, then it's wide open. Any last NBA thoughts before we go? I'm just excited for the season to start. Um, obviously, we're in the midst of football. Football's great, but and and it's much briefer. One game matters every week. But there's something about the NBA that I love. So it'll be, it'll be fun to get back into that. Uh, into the swing of things with the NBA. Excited for the NBA to be back. Hopefully the teams, the owners, the league do, do their best to stick to sports yeah. and not stick to politics at this point because they don't need any narratives. The product on the court is good. It's fun. It sells and itself. Let's, uh, let's just sit back and watch. My last thing is I just want to give a quick shout-out to – a dark horse MVP candidate, Karis Levert. Karis, everyone on this podcast is rooting for you. Let's have, have a monster season. Yet? I do have the jersey. Did you get the jersey? I do right, have the jersey. You did, you, yeah, you did send me the pick. Okay. I'm excited. Karis is going to be phenomenal. He, I mean, I mean Kyrie is going to be number two option on that team. It's going to be fun to watch. Everybody, thank you for putting up with us for the last eight hours on this podcast. Go rate, review, and subscribe to the Terrific Talk podcast on iTunes and Spotify if you haven't. Check us out on Twitter at Terrific Talk. Tom is the handle, and enjoy the NBA season. It's going to be a fun one. Trust the process, Kobe. Dude, you better hit record. Oh shit! <laughs> Welcome to Terrific Talk. My name is Tom Anderson. Back, back, Tom, Tom, Tom Anderson. Back, 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 Tom, 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 I feel ready to go another nine in. Touchdown! I feel ready to go another nine in. Touchdown! Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Terrific Talk Podcast. Welcome back to Terrific Talk Podcast. Here comes the host. I'm your host, Tom Anderson. First, behind the back! It gets to Buckner! Here comes Knight and the Knicks win it! Back, 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 back,